and welcome back to the pig parlor. I am your god man bear pig underscore nine seven and today we are back with more day our survival. Now in that net that last episode that we had done if you recall we had just finished the slaughterhouse of horrors where we basically lost almost an entire platoon of men and young boys if you will teenage boys that thought they were gung-ho and ready to do this. Needless to say, didn't quite work out for anybody. Like, I think, what, we were the only one that made it out? Maybe one other dude, but... Which, speaking of which, still kind of confuzzles me. Because in the very last portion, it was down to me and two other men. Grigory and, um... Nada? The little dude. The little teenage boy that felt like he was responsible for his stepdad and for Gavriel, uh, Gavriel Pavel, or Pavel Gavrilov. There it was, Pavel Gavrilov. Felt responsible for their two deaths. So he wanted to be the one to put on the bomb and end this she-wolf. Of course he didn't do it. He, he put the bomb on, walked in, sacrificed himself for no good reason. We still had to kill the wolf. Which was weird because whenever we went into the actual battle, it was me with two other people, even though it should have just been me with one other. And then after the battle, I have no idea what happened to the other guy, Grigory. No idea. But, we are going to pick up where we left off in that video. So let's get down here to, I believe it's Gornichi. Yep. To Gornichi. The people who live in Gorenichi hunt, grow vegetables and wheat, and also regularly ser send search parties into the ruins of Kiev. Most of the residential buildings didn't survive the war, so the, refuse, the refugees have made their home in the school, kindergarten, community center, and even the clinic. Go to Lilia. Have you found my photos yet? No, I haven't. It's a pity. I'll be back soon. So we need to go to the community center? There he is, Zetsev. The former director of the institute. Okay, we're just going to read it normally, and whenever we get to the actual dialogue, because I don't know if I could do a Russian accent the entire time. Pretty sure it's going to go Hispanic as quick as possible. Don't ask me why. The former director of the Institute of Virology dozed in the same armchair as last time. I woke him up and sat down on the chair next to him. Zetsev looked at me groggily. Then I held out the she-wolf's fang to him. What's this? That was our agreement. I held up my end. The she-wolf is dead. Now it's your turn. Zetsev turned the fang in his hands and looked at me. He seemed a little uneasy. Where is Parvel? The wolves got Gavrolov. I'm listening. All right. As you wish. Remind me. What did you want to know? Tell me about Nestorov and the other scientists who worked with him and all the rest of it. The director nodded, removed his glasses, and began wiping them methodically with a rag. He cleaned them for several long minutes. Go ahead. Don't be shy. What do you want me to say? Gregory Nestorov was a nationally renowned scientist, the pride of our institute. We worked successfully with him, Kulik and Sheshkov, for many years. Karbyshev, I think, Karbyshev, Karbyshev, transferred to us from Leningrad. Beletsky, the youngest in the team, joined later, at the end of 83. What were you working on? I could explain, but you still won't understand. Try and make me understand. Molecular genetics. They were studying the proteins and genes of the most widespread viruses. An utterly harmless endeavor, as long as you don't cross the line, of course. Nesterov crossed it. He began experimenting with mutations. He got Kulik and Karbyshev 
involved in it. Next. They hid their work from the others. I has a I has a suspicious. I has a suspicious. I has a suspicious that they were that I had a suspicion that they weren't spending their evening in the lab just to drink tea. But I chose not to stick my nose in. But then I had to. What happened? Beletsky found Nesterov's hidden cash. He dragged it out and brought me Nesterov's notebook and a voice recording. At first I couldn't even believe it, but it was his handwriting and his voice. Next. Nesterov and his pals were developing a new plague. No, not a plague. This virus... R-17 was far more dangerous than Yasinia's pestis, and what's more, it was custom made to order. For the CIA, Nesterov had created a new biological weapon for our enemy. For the CIA, so they were planning to attack the government, C- the U.S. government CIA. With a new biological weapon. Uh, A super virus, if you will. So what did you do? (coughs) I... I didn't have a choice. We reported them to the authorities. All three of them. Beletsky and Sheshkov signed this statement too. The case moved quickly. Nesterov, Kulik, and Karbyshev were arrested. Next. Then we were visited by men from the KGB. They questioned us and searched the whole institute. They took everything they could out of Nesterov's lab, even the sign on the door. They destroyed all of the biomaterial. Next. The hearing was held behind closed doors, but I was allowed to stay as a witness. It happened quickly. The evidence was overwhelming, and Karbyshev made a full confession. Article 64, Betrayal of the Motherland. They were taken straight from the courtroom to face the firing squad. But the virus was still used. (coughs) Alas, yes. It seems that Nesterov had already managed to hand out the contaminated culture to the CIA. On August 17, 1984, enemy agents dispersed R-17 into the air in various cities using special spray cans. That was day R. Yes, that's how the pandemic started wiping out most of the population of the USSR. Now, are you satisfied? We could say no, there's something else. How did the nuclear war start? Or yes, thank you for talking to me. I have to go now. I'm pretty sure we've already concluded that when the day R canisters broke out, I guess maybe not all of them died right away, but some of them turned crazy or something. And at some point, the government felt the need to drop the nukes. Or at least that's what our character is essentially thinking. So let's ask him about the news. <coughs> the director looks at me in confusion, then nods again and starts cleaning his glasses. I'm waiting. All right, all right. But it's all very straightforward. Clearly, the American intelligence agencies overestimated the effectiveness of the little killer, R-17. Or perhaps they underestimated it. What? Well, uh, the American intelligence agency overestimated the effectiveness of their little killer R-17. Or perhaps they underestimated it? Okay, that, okay. I had to reread that, I'm sorry. They thought it would leave the people of the great nation of Soviets near extinction out of their wit. And weakness by the and weakened by the disease, and they would kill off any survivors themselves. Correct. And after spilling a little blood, 
they would have access to the in this rich land of our motherland. But R-17 betrayed them. The epidemic spread too slowly. Its incubation period was too long, and too many people were immune. And already by October, tens and hundreds of thousands of people were thronging towards the USSR's border. To flee the dying country? Of course. And almost every one of them were infected. Our neighbors closed their borders. They introduced martial law, assembled their troops, and shot refugees dead in their thousands. But there were too many of them. There were. For every person they killed, two more arrived, and the border is vast. So people with enough cunning or desperation would find their way through. And when the first outbreaks of the epidemic happened in China, Mongolia, Turkey, Poland, and Finland, it was decided that extreme measures must be taken. Next. A secret session of the nuclear club. The nuclear club? Do they actually have a nuclear club? What is this, like a chess club for kids that like to talk about nuclear war? Sit around and talk about how scary the Cold War was, even though it was probably not even in their lifetime. Although this is actually, I guess, during what would have been the Cold War, the, near the, nearing the end of the Cold War, I believe. That's unusual. A secret secession of the nuclear club was held at the end of October, and the motion to cleanse the infected territory was passed. They used all the firepower they had. Yeah, okay. Slipping on my accent. <coughs> Trying to give y'all a good, you know, visual. <laughs> but they mi miscalculated again. The USS fought back. Yes. We launched our entire arsenal immediately on all targets. Even though it was doomed, the country didn't want to die. The wave of infected refugees capitalized on the chaos and overwhelmed the Allies' army. And that's how R-17 successfully spread to the rest of the world. And there was nothing anyone could do. Zetsev laughed bitterly. No, but it was every nation for itself at this point. The USA started bombing Europe. India attacked China. Deep-rooted conflicts flared up. It was as if the whole world had gone mad. The only place spared was Antarctica. But, as always, mankind manages to make things even worse. Does that mean that there's nothing left on the other continents either? Is the whole world a wasteland? To be honest, I don't know. Excuse me, young man, but we've talked so long, it's time for me to take my pills. Well, thank you for talking to me. What's the trader got to offer here? If you want something, if you have something I need, you can exchange it for something you need. I can sell cloth for fire brick, iron pop for lead, TT ammo for Bryocarm. Bri Bryocarm. Bryo that is so hard to say, apparently. Assault rifle parts for apples. Or thread for cigarettes. I don't need any of that, nor do I really want to give up, really, any of that. So, <laughs> I had come. Wait. I had competing. Okay. I had competing visions in my head of how it all could have happened. But the director's account set everything in its place. The final gaps had been filled. Would the truth lead to some kind of epiphany for me personally? Unlikely. Was I going to hate the people who had destroyed all of civilization with their own hands and want to exact my revenge? No. I was too weary for powerful emotions like that. The only thing I felt was quiet sorrow. Only one question remained. How was I going to tell Svetlana that the person responsible for it all, her father? 
There is nothing holding me in Kiev anymore. Time to go back to Tver and face Svetlana. So now we go back to Tver. Tver. Poopy Kaka? I don't know. <laughs> so. head over this way. We also could use to probably get some fuel. Is there any place in here worth searching out? I mean, I could probably do to search some of this stuff out, but primarily I'm going to need the fuel. We won't worry so much about the houses, but we will go ahead and check a couple of the other spots like this right here. Oh, come on, you could have given me that outfit. I don't know if it would have been better than what I'm wearing, but I'd have liked to have it. Speaking of outfits and whatnot, what can we build right now? Oh, yeah, we need a lot of stuff to build that, but that would really be useful. So would that tent... Hello, car. We'll open that and see if we can't come up with the materials required for that. And for the car battery, because we're going to need a good working car battery to be able to rebuild it. And of course, we'll have to find one of those cars, tear it completely apart. So, yeah. Or something. Hopefully, I can throw that together to give me a bit more carry weight when I'm not running my motorcycle. Question boils down to can I carry it on my motorcycle? That's going to be the million dollar question right there for you. It's too dark, I'm outside. Come on now. Tear down this car and see if we can get a few items right here, right now. Tires, some machine oil, and some motor part or engine parts. What do we got over here? Let's find out, shall we? <coughs> I need that insulated tape. Mm. Of course, the one thing I say I need is the one thing they don't give me. You gotta love it. I don't think this place is locking me too much on these rads, man. Alright, let's head over here to our location, our little campsite, and dump off what we've got to make room for other parts. Do y'all really want to take me? The pet is wounded, okay. Oh, snap! How did I miss and hit the... Wow. Just wow. I don't know what to say on that. That's a new one. Was not expecting that, to be perfectly honest. Hello. Hold that for me. How did... Love it. The wall. And you...
kill my dog. I got you, sunshine. I got something for you, sweetheart. Shoot my dog. See how you like it. You can reload all day long, sweetie. You're dead. Even with two different injuries to my body, I will drop you like a sack of bricks, sweetheart. Yeah, see, I forgot all about the fact that we are injured from that fight. Yeah. 11 days on that one. Four days on that one. That is no bueno, ladies and gentlemen. That's no bueno, amigo. It's no good. Necesita mas, por favor. Obele. So there's all my goodies. Let's open up the box, see what we got. Good, more automotive parts. We're going to need that for building the car. Because we got to build us a vehicle. What have I got that's weighing that much? I can't really say I sit. Well, I mean, there's a few cigarettes there, but that's not going to weigh that much. Am I 59%? What? It's got to be the health issue. Carry weight down 16%, carry weight down 16%. That's got to be it. Otherwise, I honestly don't see what else could be causing me with a bicycle, with a cart, and a backpack to be carrying that little and be that over encumbered. Am I serious? Wow. We might have to move on and find us a better place to do this. This five radiation is tearing me up. See if I can get enough gas real quick just right here to be able to do what we need to do. I need to find a battery. Almost leveled up as well. Maybe we can get some decent perks for that. Maybe. Figures. Can't carry much of anything right now. How many do we need in total to make it as far as the engine parts go? 20. So we're good. We're good on that. So we're at 92% carry weight because, of course, we're not going to be able to carry much of nothing right now. Which makes me wonder, once we actually get... I might have to actually kill some time moving around just trying to get... Because as you can see, that's now down to 3 days instead of 4. That's now down to 10 days instead of 11. Not available. Uh-oh. Wait a minute. Yeah, okay, so I see we can't wear the backpack. Oh, well, yeah, now we can because I'm taking the pain medicine. So let's keep some pain meds on us at all times. How much uh, fuel do we have? 3.8 liters. That is going to get us virtually nowhere. With the 4.7, that gives me 8.6 total gallons, kilos, whatever you want to call it. We're going to need a bit more fuel. Now, I keep seeing these little vans with the little blue cars, which is one of the cars that I need to, to crap. Look, there we go. There's one right there, and it's still got a little fuel in it. I had a little fuel in it. We might be able to get enough parts right here to build the thing up. I don't know, as far as like in this town. 
if we can get a dadgum dead battery, we'll be all right. Ooh. Radiation resistance. That'll come in handy, wouldn't you say? Yeah, it just dropped to four. So now we're no longer taking five points per second of radiation. We're just taking four. So it reduced a point. That's not too shabby. How many tires do I need? I'm sure I've got enough tires. I think at this point, all I'm probably going to need back at my camp, for the most part, is going to be that battery. But I'll have to bring all of those materials to here. Because, unfortunately, I don't have the ability to pick that car up and carry it back to my base. So I will have to bring all of the parts to here. But that's cool. That's not a problem. We can do that. If we could just find a battery. There we go. Now we will need to repair said battery. Or recharge it, if you will. That gave me nothing? Seriously? Okay, well, I mean, hey, it happens. So let's head back to base real quick. And I want to take a look and see how much of the resources at my base and on me, how close am I to being able to build this? If I have all the resources, I, oh man. Yeah, I still need a lot of scrap metal. I need a lot of machine oil. I need eight more rubber parts and like almost, well, 39 tape. So I still need quite a bit of material. Now, the scrap metal will be, will be easy to get. I've already got the battery on me. See if I can go ahead and make, yeah, see, here we go. Even though that's gonna take 10 of the tape right there. So that's going to be interesting, trying to come up with enough tape, because tape is not exactly the super easiest thing to come by. It's not really difficult to find. Now, as far as getting quite a bit up, that's a different story. That's going to take me having to basically go through multiple towns like this right here and grind out each individual house trying to find enough tape to build that car. With that being said, though, that's all the time we have in today's episode, so... I will definitely try to get this grinding this grinding done off video unless y'all would like to see it. I mean, I can always make videos out of the grinding. I don't mind, but I, I feel like that's not something y'all want to see me do. Just going house to house searching for certain items. If you do, let me know down in the comments. I'll be happy to, though. It's more content, so it's more videos you can watch. Totally optional. But if you like what we're doing, please punch that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and turn on that bell for notifications so you never miss any videos when it's uploaded. Consider leaving a comment down in that comment section letting me know what you think of these videos and what you would like to see in future videos. And as always, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your week, and I will see you in the next episode.